God is good. God is good. Let me see those who are happy to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, what do you say for the choir? Uh, we, we praise them for the wonderful song. We also want to appreciate uh, the young lady for the children, uh, Someone uh, That was Sister Esca, uh, Esther Kwamboka. I uh, remember, I think that's the name. And you also want to appreciate the elders, even for the baby dedication. All the programs which are bypassed, we want to thank God for every activity, because the Lord has been good to us. Amen? Yes, some of us are feeling cold, so they are not willing to respond, but it's well, because God is still faithful. Amen? Yes, so we want to praise God for you. We want to praise God for you, and we thank God for every activity which has taken place here. Uh, from morning to this point. Today, our sermon uh, comes from the book of uh, uh, Revelation 22, uh, verses 20. Uh, that is our focus today. That is our focus today. I didn't come with a big sermon title. I came with a question in form of a sermon title which says, Will you be missed? Will you be missed? Maybe you can, uh, you can ask your neighbor, Will you be missed? Uh, this row seems to be doing well, but this row is asleep. Uh, let us pray for them. Uh, the question says, will you be missed? Yes, will you be missed? Uh, that is uh, our sermon title, and that is a thought uh, that I want to draw from the book of Revelation 22, verses 20. Revelation 22, verses 20. Shall we pray? Loving Master, we thank you so much for their faithfulness. I pray that like you promised to labor with me, may you inspire me one more time. May you speak to your children that, Lord, at the end of the day, all of us will be able to say that surely we had you speak to us. I pray that, Lord, this someone will be able to impart minds, instruct the arts, and influence behaviors towards godliness for a plead in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation 20 verses uh, 22 verses 20 it says he who testifies to these things says surely I am coming quickly amen even so come Lord Jesus I repeat the reading if you are with me say amen I repeat the reading Revelation 22 verses 20 it says he who testifies of these things says Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Will you be missed? And I want to begin uh, by saying that the book of Revelation should be understood, should be read from the standpoint, not from the standpoint of John the Revelator when the vision was given him, but from the standpoint of a progressive fulfillment of various parts of prophecy. I repeat that when you are reading the book of Revelation, then you don't need to understand the book of Revelation from the time that the vision was given John the Revelator at the Isle of Patmos, but the book of Revelation should be understood from the point of uh, as a progressive fulfillment of several parts of prophecy. When John saw the vision, when John had the vision in the Isle of Patmos, he stood as the representative of the church, not only at the time, but also from the time that men fell in sin back in the Garden of Eden. If you are with me, say amen. You are not with me. You are not with me yet. So I'm taking time to introduce this sermon. You are making the work difficult, but don't worry, the spirit is in control. Hallelujah. We are saying that when you want to understand the book of Revelation, it should be understood not from the time that the vision was given John the Revelator in the Isle of Patmos, but you need to understand the book of Revelation from the standpoint as a progressive fulfillment of various uh, parts of prophecy. When John the Revelator is standing on the Isle of Patmos, the vision that John saw, the word that he heard that behold I come quickly is a testimony 
that Jesus Christ will come for the second time. Hallelujah. My friend, he will come whether we are ready or not. He will come whether you are prepared or not. But what do you know? That Jesus will come for the second time. Hallelujah. So when John had the vision that surely I come quickly of which he responded loud enough in prayers by saying that a man, a man even so come quickly. John's response is echoes the desires of the church right from the time of that the two pairs turn their sorrowing steps from the garden of Eden and that is when Eve and Adam fell in sin. From that time, the children of God have been looking forward to the time when Christ will come for the second time. My mic is too sharp. My mic is too sharp. I do not know if you are feeling it. It is too sharp. It's like it is a tutor. I'm preaching using tutor. But I'm praying that God will be able to do something. Hallelujah. So we are saying that when John had the vision, when he knew that the time will come, that is the prayer of everyone. Men of faith, from the time that the two pair turned their sorrowing steps from the Garden of Eden, we have been looking to the time when Christ will come for the second time. We've been looking forward to the time that death will be done away with. We are looking for the time when Jesus will appear the second time. I believe that all that you are hearing this voice, all of us are looking forward to the second coming of Christ. True or false? True or false? Because what God has prepared for us is better than today. Hallelujah. He is saying that here we die, but in the land to come there will be no death. Here we are higher mourners because people are tired of mourning. But in the city to come there will be no budgets of mourners. Mm. Hallelujah. If you are with me, let us wave. So what I am saying is simple. That what we have today is not it cannot be compared with what is coming for us in the future. Here people die, but in heaven there will be nothing like death. Here people become sick, but what God has prepared for us is better than what we have. Say amen, my friend. And so from that time, the children of faith have been looking forward to the time that Christ will come for the second time. Well, they, they journeyed trusting and believing that Christ was to come for the second time. Adam looked forward to the time, though he died, he looked forward to the time when he will regain the tree of life. Abraham looked forward to the time when he will gain the city who's, who, with no foundation, whose builder and maker is the Lord. Moses looked forward to the time when he will be able to enter the promised land that he saw with the eye of a prophet. David looked forward to that time when he will be able to enter the city, the holy city, people look, the prophets and, and, and the apostles, they look forward to the time that they will be able to hold hands and together they will be able to sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what is coming is better than what we have today. Hallelujah. So John says that a man even so come Lord Jesus. I want to say that Christ will come for the second time. And when he cometh, the Bible says that every eye will see him. So in other words, you will not be able to call your son who is in America. That is a book. Have you seen Christ there yet? No. Every eye will see Jesus at the same time. Those in large cities will see Jesus. Those in secluded, forgotten corners of the world will be able to see Jesus. But I'm trying to say that Jesus will come to make everything right. Mm. Hallelujah. He will come to make everything right. We are tired of this world, but the city to come will be better than today. Because one of the things that will make heaven a better place is because there will be nothing like pol political parties. There will be nothing like Tingiza Miti, Tingiza Miti. All those things are down here. There will be nothing like Bulu, Bulu. There will be nothing like Wilbur. There will be nothing like Democrat and Republican. We are saying what is coming is better than today. Say amen, my friend. Yes. Even if you are not saying amen, we are saying that what is coming is better than what we have today. Why? Because we can see by faith. You see, we are not yet there. But you can see it by faith. 
The writer to Hebrews says that faith is the evidence of things not seen. Is the substance of things not seen. For without faith, it is impossible to please who? God. Because when you have faith, faith sees the barren conceive. Mm. Hallelujah. Let me try this through. Let me try this through. We are saying that faith sees the barren conceive. Mm. Hallelujah. Faith sees you out of a wheelchair. Faith, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. By faith, we sing the songs of Moses and the Lamb. By faith. Mm. Hallelujah. So, faith is what you need because what is coming is better than what you have down here. But the question is, will you be what? Be missed. Will you be missed? When the people will be marching, when the saints will be marching, will you be missed? Will you be missed? When people will be plucking the tree of life, drinking from the river of life, will you be what? Missed. They are not talking with me. Let me try this through. I'm saying, will you be what? Will you be missed? Will you be missed? Will you be what? Yes, that row. Will you be what? Will you be missed? Because people can sing anything. They can sing, but the question is, are we focusing on what is to come? Because what is coming is better than what we have today. Hallelujah. Yes, the songwriter says that let us have faith for what is coming is better than what we have today. But the question is, will you be missed? Will you be missed? You see, it is good that we have dedicated babies here today. And we are praying for more babies. Hallelujah. This mic is not good. We are saying that we are praying for more babies today. But even as we pray for more babies, the best that you can do to a child as a father is not pointing them to Christ. That is the best of the best. The best you can do to your child is to love their mother. And now that one, they will not say amen. Let me try this one. <laughs> the best you can do to your child is to love their mother. The best you can do to, to their child is to love their husband. Are we together? It is not putting food on the table. All these things are earthly, but what is coming is better than today. The question is, will you be what? Missed. It's a very simple sermon. Will you be missed? Will you be missed? When the saints shall go marching in, when everything will be made anew, will you be missed? Will you be missed? The question is, do you love people like David, like Jonathan, love David? I mean the Bible. Because when you study very well, First Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through to 4, the Bible says that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of who? David. But see, when you study the text, you realize that Jonathan, though he comes from affluent society, he does not waste time to ask David whether he comes from a functional family or not. Did you see it there? You see, the world acts in a way that those who drive only want to associate with those who drive. Then those who walk only want to associate with those who walk. Let me tell you, my friend, before God, all of us are equal. Hallelujah. My grandfather used to tell me two days before he died. My grandfather, hello, told me two days before he died. He says that young man, come. And I give you what will carry you through this life. Two days before he died. And so he says, that young man, I want you to understand that in this life, respect the poor, respect the rich, respect the black, respect the brown. My friend, I'm doing what you call opposite. When I say tall, you say short. Why are you guys looking at me like this? I'm trying to say this. In this life, respect the tall, Respect the what? Now, this is now good church now. Respect the, the brown. Respect the... So the opposite of brown is black. <laughs> you are not with me. So whether white or black, whether short or brown, respect them because in this life, two things unite the rich and the poor. One is death. Death does not choose whether you are brown or dark, whether you are educated or not. Now let me ask you, where you come from in your community? Have you seen only men who are educated die? No, you are not talking to me. 
Death does not care whether you are a short or what. Whether you are educated or what. I'm saying, do you love people the same way Jonathan was able to love David? And in fact, he did not ask whether he has gone to school or not because that is the love of Christ. Mm. The love that loves uncondi unconditionally. That's why we love Jesus because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for, uh, for, for ungodly. Mm. Hallelujah. That's why you are in church today because Jesus died for us. Do you love people? Do you love people? And the Bible says in 2 First Samuel 20 verses 18 that Jonathan said to David that tomorrow is the new moon but you will be missed for your seat will be empty. Are you with me? If you are with me, say amen. Will you be missed? He says that, you see, when you study, you realize that Jonathan echoes the desire of a nation. Everyone knew, anyone, everyone loved David. David was not loved by a few. Everyone in the community loved him, except Saul, who wanted to kill him. Because when you study 1 Samuel 18, verses 5, the Bible says that everyone loved him. When you go to 1 Samuel 18, verses 16, the Bible says, All Judah and Israel loved who? David. Are you with me? So, when he's echoing by saying that tomorrow is the new moon and you will be missed for your seat will be empty. What he's saying is echoing the desire of all nations for everyone love David. Mm. Why? Because David cheered people up. Cheered people up. He did not discourage people. You see, many people want to be missed. Many people want to be remembered. Let me tell you, everyone can be remembered, either for good reason or bad reason. But it takes a good man to be missed. Mm. No, you didn't get me. Even Adolf Hitler is remembered, true or not? People, everyone can be missed, for, for, can be remembered, but not everyone can be missed. But you see, some will be remembered. Just for pushing people to get married. That is what they are good at. When people come to church, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? My friend, you don't produce husbands. Let people be. Hallelujah. Yes. Because you, are, you don't produce husbands. Many people want to be remembered just for pushing people to get married. My friend, I better stay home with my daughter than to be married by a wrong man. Okay, you didn't get me. So let me explain. We are in a world where people are killed by the very people who were them in charge, in true or false. So if my daughter is better, I stay home with my daughter than to marry a wrong husband. But people are saying, oh, you are, your days are passing. Your days are passing. You are 40. My friend, even you, you are saying that the emails, your emails are, are getting married. What are you still waiting for? My friend, even you, most of your age mates have died. No one has asked you to die. <laughs> so let people be. Mm, hallelujah. People want to be remembered for bad reason. But I'm trying to say, will you be what? Be missed for good reason. Do you encourage people or do you pull people down? Do you love people? Because you will not be missed. You will not be remembered with the number of doors you close. But you'll be, be missed when you lift people up. Okay, this one you didn't get. You are Adventist. Some will be remembered for pushing people to be vegetarian. Be vegetarian. With them, they think that going to heaven is contingent by being a vegetarian. It is good to be a vegetarian for your health. Are we together? But it's not a gateway to heaven. Are we together? Are you connected to him who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings? Here you will not say amen because from your faces you are a shining vegetarian. But you are saying this. We are saying this. Being a vegetarian is good for your health. But be a vegetarian at home also. Because people want to be a vegetarian here at, at church only. When you ask them why vegetarian here but at home you eat everything. 
that we don't want to interfere by the Holy Spirit. We don't want to interfere by the Holy Spirit. I say, if the Holy Spirit is only here in church, be a Christian at home the same way you are a Christian back at your, at your home. Are we together? Don't be a Christian in church only. Church only. Be a Christian at all times. Because being a vegetarian is good, but it's not a gateway to what? It's okay. I mean, the Bible. The Bible says that Saul tried to kill David, but God protected him. I'm building the psalm. Saul tried to kill David eight times, but God was protecting him. Are you together? Because when you start with Jesus Christ, no weapon formed again is to prosper. Enemies are always there, but when you walk with the Lord, God will protect you. It does not matter how long it takes. Stay connected to Christ. Are we together? Because the same Bible says that if God be for us. Do you know this one? No, you don't know this one. This road doesn't know this one. If God be for us, who can be against what? Yes. So even if the enemies are pushing you down, don't worry. The question is, when John is shouting and saying, even so come, Lord Jesus, that one was echoing the desire of everyone here. Because all of us, we are looking forward to the second coming of the Lord. And I want to say this to a, a single lady who feels that things are tough. There's a God who loves you. I want to say to her husband, who is in the verge of losing his job, that don't worry, one day everything will be right, all right. For Jesus will make everything new. And I want to say to an orphan, listening to me now, but my friend, probably you are alone. The parents died. But remember that what is coming is better than today. Will you be missed? Will you be missed? David, when you look at the election, election of Saul and David, you realize that Saul is loved because he's most handsome. Is there anyone here who feels like he's, most un he's more handsome than me? So, I'm in the Bible. Because First Samuel, chapter 9, verses 2. Are you with me? Say, read your Bible. Read with your Bible. First Samuel, chapter, two, chapter 9, verses 2. The Bible says that Saul is universally loved. Why? Because he's most handsome. Is your Bible saying the same? Some of you are not reading their Bibles. You carry your gadget, but you left the Bible at home. Saul is loved because he's most handsome. Let me try to invite someone here who is taller than me. Someone who is taller than me. Elder Uma, do you think you're taller than me? Yeah, please come. Please come. I think you are taller than me. You, oh, there's also Elder Munda. The two of you, can you stand up? Please stand up. So, hey, Elder, come. Elder, come. The two of you. The two of you. See, when Saul is being elected king, the Bible says that he was the most handsome than all the other men in what? In Israel. I thought you have read that. Is that what the Bible says? Number two, the Bible says that from his shoulder going upward, he was the tallest. Are we together? Good now. My friend, why are you staying far away from me? Move closer. <laughs> you are staying far away. Yes. Saul is elected because he's the most handsome man in Israel. If Saul could walk in this church this morning, even when the preacher is preaching, every single lady will turn to look at Saul. I don't know about the married. Saul is handsome. And the Bible says, when you read chapter 10, verses 24, that even Saul, who is supposed to, uh, nominate, to elect him, Saul says, look, the man that God has chosen. Okay, these guys are not reading the Bible. That's what I've realized. Second, 1 Samuel chapter 9. 1 Samuel chapter 9. 
you are not with me. So I have to read some of these verses here so that you can understand it. First Samuel chapter 9 verses 2. The Bible says, And he had a choice and handsome son whose name was Saul. There was not a more handsome person than he among the children of Israel. From his shoulder upward, he was taller than any of the people. Chapter 10, verses 24. 10, verses 24. The Bible says, And Samuel said to all the people, Do you see him whom the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. You see, he's seeing, he's looking at things the way men look at things. Even in the 21st century, there are those who think that leadership is because you are taller. It's because you are a white man. It's because you are a black man. It's because you are a Luo. Because you are a Kisi. My friend, the leadership, this, this battle for heaven is spiritual, not physical. You will not say amen, so I'll continue now. Many people think that because you have gone to school now, you are qualified to be a church leader. It is not about qualification. It is about being connected to Christ. You are not with me now. Now look at the election of David. 1 Samuel 16, 11 and 12. The Bible says that David is even forgotten by his own family. Even the father has forgotten him. But then verse 7, the Bible says that Saul is told, Samuel is told, my friend, don't look at the outward appearance, but look at the heart. For God looks at the heart. You see, they are not with me, so they are not saying amen. Let me try this row. I'm saying that the battle that we have down here is not physical, but spiritual. Okay, let me qualify so that you understand. Men look at outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Now, you didn't get that, so let me bring it down. Men are most interested in the size of your car. It is good to have a car. Are we together? I'm not saying you walk forever, my friend, look for a car. <laughs> Men are interested in the size of your car. But God is most interested in the heart of the car driver. Say amen, my friend. The other one you didn't get, so let me use the other one. Men are interested in the size of your house. It is good to have a big house. Don't stay in one bed seat of eternity. But move. Are we together? But as you move, remember that God looks at the heart. Okay, you didn't get that. Let me use the other one. Men, like churches around the world, are most interested in big numbers. We are thousands. We are 7,000. We are 8,000. My friend, that one, God is most interested in the spiritual level of the church. Mm, hallelujah. Don't look the way you are, the world look at things. Pray for the heart. Hallelujah. The question is, do you love people the same way Jonathan loved David? Do you hate people the same way Saul hated David to the extent that he wanted to bring him down? My friend, I'm saying only good men will be missed. Hmm? These are very simple, Samuel. All the good men will be missed. Because when the trumpet sound, even those who are in the graves will hear the voice of the king. And they will say, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Are we together? Do you love people? Because David, everyone in Israel loved David. Everyone in church loved David. Those who sat, like now you are seated here, loved David. Why? Because David was a good man. It takes a good man to be spiritual. Because those who are spiritual will be missed. Mm. Are we together? Even church leadership. Okay, let me bring it down so that you understand me. There are people, if the seat you are occupying now, occupying now, was empty, will anyone take time to notice? Which, which impact do you have upon this congregation? 
When the time comes that you have gone far away, will people remember you for the good works that you used to do? Do you support the cause of the gospel? Do you love people? Mm. Because good men will be missed. Even if you are, there are those who work under your, uh, under your roof, in your family. You have house managers. House managers. A friend called me two, like, a few months ago saying that house manager had slapped him. So I was wondering how can house manager slap him? They came back home late thinking the food was ready. And he asked, why is the food? If the way, as he tried to ask, why is the food? Pop! Slap! <laughs> the wife was standing by. Standing by. Who thought that? No, let me now. The husband, please now, let me handle it. When the wife also tried, pa! So he said, my pastor, what do I do? What do I do? Then I said, my friend, even if that was me, the house manager would have gone at quick speed. You see, the fact that you are a Christian does not make you weak. Are we together? Does not make you weak. Because there are men who say that because I'm an elder in church, your brother can beat your wife. Then you sit down saying we'll quote Matthew for him. My friend, don't quote Matthew. That one, handle properly. <laughs> Let me say it. Even, even me. Even me who's a pastor preaching now. If you try to know that I will pray for you in a different manner, slap my wife. <laughs> Why? Because Christianity does not make you weak. Christianity makes you spiritual. How are you together? Through stand for justice. There are those who work for you. And you make them work till past midnight. While you, your wife and your children, you have gone to sleep. And then you expect them to wake up earlier to cook for you. My friend, treat people with respect. Because you never know they are silent prayers. Okay, this one you don't know. You are not with me. So let me speak to my elder here. Let us treat human beings not as loathsome specimen of humanity, but as those who are created in the image and likeness of God. Are we together? Because you never know they are silent prayers. Because one day, Esther was a maiden. The next day, Esther was a king, a, a queen. You, why are you not saying amen? You are not with me. So let, I'm trying to, let me try this one. One day, Mordecai was at the gate. But the next day, Mordecai was a prime minister. Because you never know the silent prayers of those who work under you. Treat them with respect. That one day when they go higher, they will remember you. Will you be missed? Will you be missed? You want to be remembered? Be a good person. Hallelujah. Because one day, every son of a man, every daughter of a man, will ask and will say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And that is the echo of everyone. Are we together? You are not getting me, so let me give you a story. Let me give you a story. This one, I made a mistake. I was a young man, naive young man. But I will not tell you I made a mistake. You will judge by yourself. I was in form two. When they asked me to preach. I didn't ask to preach. They came and asked me to preach. Those who know my story. You know that I was a preacher. Then I became a soloist. I became a soloist because of this. This. They asked me to preach. I prepared my sermon. Prepared everything ready. I didn't have the best shirt, but I was putting on my best. I didn't have my best trouser. I was in my best. So on the D-Day, a big event was taking place. I read with my sermon. I came early as possible because I knew this is my day. This is my day. I sat down in the congregation waiting for them to come for me. No one came. No one came. So by 10, by 10, I see them picking people one by one, one by one, one by one. Then I'm saying, they will come for me, because today is my day. No one came. So they are going to preparation room. But as a man, in my, in my native language, 
we are taught that men must be brave. So I say, even if they don't come, I will go. So I picked my stuff and went with my someone. No one was willing to greet me. So I say, these guys, are they not aware that I'm the speaker of the eye? So I look at the man and I say, my mom, pastor, elder, have you seen I'm the speaker of the day? But they say, my friend, in this church, the higher cancels the lower. You see, that is a good thing, but God does not work that way. Are we together? Because God loves to be for God, all of us are equal. And so I say, if now I cannot preach, it's okay. Let me carry my sermon. Carry my sermon. I carried my sermon to the to the to the to the maize uh, maize garden. During those days, maize was green. Maize was green. And so I started preaching, Hallelujah, mm, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. When I was preaching, the maize was going to the left and to the what? No, these guys are not with me. <laughs> Let me try it. To the left, then no, also to the front and backward. That was a clear testimony that the Holy Spirit was working. <laughs> are we together, church? And I'm trying to say, my friend, whatever position that you hold, the question is, do you love people? Do you treat people with respect? Because one day, one day, all of us will be rewarded for the good works. Why? Because will you be what? Uh, you, know, you are not talking to me. Will you be what? Will you be missed? Do you love people? Do you feed the angry? Do you clothe the naked? Do you visit those who are in prison walls? Do you? Because the Bible says, defend the fatherless, defend the widow. That is the Bible. That is Psalms 82 verses 3 and 4. He says, defend the fatherless. Encourage the widow. Why? Because what is coming is better than what we have today. But the question is, will you be Will you be missed? If you love Christ, let me say it. That one day, the eastern sky shall open. And all of us will be all the king. And together, we will say, this is the monster. We have waited for him. Come, Lord Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. So that will mark the end of tribulations of this world. That will mark the end of political parties. That will mark the end of sorrow of this world. That when everyone will say, Come on, come Lord, come Lord. The question is, will you be? Will you be missed? Yes. So Saul is saying that tomorrow is the new moon. But you'll be missed. For your seat will be empty. Why? Because it's echoing the desire of a nation. But you see, David was a desire of all Israel. But we ask, we have Jesus who is the desire of what? Ages. And one day, we shall be all the king. You may have gone through the challenges of this life. You may have gone through the difficulties of this life. But let us say with Job that I know my redeemer what? Lives. And he says, he shall stand at last upon the earth. And then verse 27, he says, Oh, my heart yearns for it. Mm. In other words, I can't wait to be with the Lord. Are you with me? I can't wait to walk in the streets of gold. I can't wait to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. I can't wait to stand on the sea of glass. And I'm saying, will you be? Will you be missed? Even if God has given you a wife, how you treat that wife back home is what makes you a Christian. It's not how you preach. It is not how you make announcement in church. It is not how you appear in your suit. The question is, how do you treat your wife at home? Because women come to church looking down. They can't look up when they remember how the very people who said they love them in church are mistreating them back home. So, because one day you'll be asked, where is the wife of your youth? 
Are you with me? If you are with me, say amen. Will you be missed? Are you a good person? Are you spiritual? Do you love people? Do you treat people with respect they deserve? Do you love people? Do you pray for people? Because one day, good men will be missed. Good men will see the king, but bad men will be missed. Why? Because they were not prepared down here. They were like the, the, the rich man. You know, do you know the story of the rich man? And Lazarus. That is Luke 16, 25. The Bible says that with you, the rich man, you had everything. But now Lazarus is comforted, but you, you are tormented. Okay, you are not getting me. So let me explain it. The rich man loved public applause. They love people saying, yes, yes. You see, the poor man, Lazarus, will be brought before him in his palace. The sight of Lazarus was not a problem to him. Because the sight of Lazarus will massage his ego. Okay, let me explain so that you understand me. Lazarus, every morning, will be brought to this man. This man will not kick him out. Why? Because when this man sat somewhere else, as the king, as the rich man was eating, Lazarus will look at the wall and will say, this one has come from Dubai. Good work, my friend. And the man will say, thank God you are here to see what others are not willing to see. He will turn, look at the wall, the house, and he will say, yes, wonderful, congratulations, man. And he will say, yes, I thank God you are here. But he will not give him food. Mm. Why? Because he thought that those public applause are better. The Bible says a day will come when destiny will be changed. Those who love God in this life will forever with Jesus. While men who thought they will make it to heaven will miss out. Okay, you didn't get me? So let me explain it. Many people will miss heaven. Not because the gospel was not preached, but because they were too comfortable. They knew with us we have made it. We have made it. Yet there are many people who will be in heaven whom you thought will never be there. Why? Because each and every day they are working, they are working towards eternity. The question is, will you be missed? So I want to speak to a young man here. It is be difficult, but don't be worried. Christ will give you victory. Hallelujah. I want to speak to a single mother here. That don't worry. Christ will give you victory. I want to speak to a single mother. Christ will give you victory. One day, all of us will be all the king. And we will say, come Lord. Even so, amen. Hallelujah. Will you be? Be a good man. Because good men will not be missed. Good men will stand with Jesus for eternity. Hallelujah. How many are saying that with me, I don't want to be missed. I want to be all the king. And I want to join John the Revelator in saying, Amen. Come so. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. How many are saying that I want to make it to the city for square? City for square. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Will you be missed? Will you be missed? Are you a good man? Are you a woman after God's own heart? Do you love people like Jonathan loved David? Or you hate people like Saul hated David? Are you a woman after God's own heart? Because soon Christ will come to take us home. We, we all join by saying, Amen, even so. Come, Lord Jesus. And may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. Amen. Let's turn to him two and two. It is almost time for the Lord to come. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say, The stars of heaven are growing deep. It must be the 
the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The signs foretold in the sun and moon, in earth and sea and sky. Aloud proclaim to all mankind, the coming of the Master draweth nigh. of the day oh it must be the breaking of the day the night is almost gone the day is coming on oh it must be the breaking of the day it must be time for the waiting church to cast her pride away with garden lawns and burning loves to look for the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Go quickly out in the streets and lanes and in the broad highways and call. of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of Day. Thank you so much. We want to pray. Uh, you may be here going through the difficulties of this life and you want God to answer you at the very point of your needs. Probably you are looking for a job. You are looking for peace. You want promotion. Whatever it is, you have a, a member of your family who is sick and you want us to pray together. I will, I, I will welcome you to join me on the pulpit. We pray together. And number two, I also want to pray with someone who is saying that I don't want to be missed. I want to enter eternity and you're praying that God will give you the strength. God will give you the power of the Holy Spirit to help you to overcome the challenges of this life. If you are here and that is your prayer request, as they come walk to join me on the pulpit, you also join the team to pray together. Number three, number three, if you are here and probably you want to be baptized, you've never been baptized, and you want us to pray together. You want us to, you want us to help you be prepared for eternity. That when we will be baptizing people during the camp meeting. You also want to be baptized. Please also join me on the pulpit as we pray together. As we do uh, the song 522. Please come as we do song number 522. We want to pray together. You want to pray together. Just join me. We pray together. You have gone through the challenges of this life. Even this morning you came to church. You are watching online and you are looking down. Things are bad for you. But God can answer you at the very point of your needs. As we do this song, those for baptism, those with prayer requests, those who are seeking for the power of the Spirit to help them overcome the challenges of this life, the addictions of this life, please walk and join us on the pulpit as we pray together. Thank you so much. I want to invite Elder Nyambu to come. Elder Nyambu to come. We'll pray together. Elder Nyambu is our chief elder. 
together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the soul with rest, the Lord is in Christ the soul with rest, the Lord is in Christ the soul with rest. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Oath is covenant and blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, clad in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You want us to pray? If you are here, for, you want to be baptized. You are uh, joining us at the vestry so that we can be able to pray together. Those with prayer request, we have to pray that the Lord will be able to meet at the very point of heart. And those who are here to go home, just ask the question, will you be missed? Because soon Christ will come. But if you live a good life down here, a faithful life, a righteous life, trusting and believing in God, God will give us victory. Ask the question, will you be missed? Let us pray. Loving Master, we thank you so much for thy faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. Lord, we stand here today with various difficulties in our hearts. Father, in a special way, you want to remember our sisters who are sick. You want to remember our brothers who are in hospital beds. You also want to remember the brothers who came to church this morning, weighed down by the difficulties of this life. It is my prayer, Lord Almighty, that you may be able to come through for them. Father, I want to pray for the single mother somewhere who is listening to this voice that, Father, it may seem difficult, but, Father, it is my prayer that you may be able to come through for her. It is my prayer that the children will be able to go to school. It is my prayer that you will guide them. It is my prayer that you will protect them. I also want to remember an, or the orphan somewhere listening to this voice. Even those in the verge of committing suicide, may you come through for them. One more time, may you speak to the heart Reminding them that, Lord, you care, you see, and you know all the challenges of this life. I also want to pray for the family that came to this church together. But, Lord, you know that even last night they were not able in good terms with one another. They fought one another throughout the night. They came to this church with one hope that, Lord, they want to hear you speak to their hearts. Father, you who is able to restore peace in families, may you be able to come through for them. I'm praying for the young people who have Go, going through various addictions of this life. Those who have various addictions of this life, that Father, may you be able to come through for them. Through the power of the Spirit, I pray, Lord, that your children who are listening to this voice, that those who are praying, that Lord, you may be a help them through the power of the Spirit to do right, that Lord, when you shall appear for the second time, all of us will be able to join the words of John by saying, Amen, even so, come, Lord Jesus. 
We thank you for reminding us that the, so, the difficulties of this life are just for a moment. For he who, is, who promised to come will soon come to take us home because he cannot wait to be with us. Him who has missed us, Jesus Christ, will one day meet those who can't wait to be with him. For those who have missed him will one day meet Christ who has missed to be with us. So Lord, even as he say and he gives, he gives us the assurance that behold, I come quickly. Let your son and daughters join by saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. I want to pray for the sons and daughters who probably are here uh, because they decide to be baptized. Father, it is my prayer that you may be able to speak to every soul. This evening we thank you. This morning we thank you. This afternoon we thank you, Jesus, because you still love us. So help us to fight our battles through the power of the Spirit. Where we did not touch, it is our prayer that through the power of the Spirit, you may continue to minister to us, reminding us that we should not be missed, for what is coming is better than what we have today. I plead in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Tell your neighbor God loves you.